this is something near and dear to both me and Josh's hearts. Uh, so is Josh, it? Is it really? So, yes, uh, Josh Torres. Uh, we are going to be talking about now Mega Dimension Neptunia V2. Now, obviously, the biggest concern, people keep reading the title of this, and it reads like Mega Dimension Neptunia 7. I think I did the count. I think it still counts as the seventh game, I believe. It, uh, well, I mean, but, let's let's think about it here. And there are the three PS3 games, and then there are the that. three Rebirth remake games on... But those don't uh, get, yeah, those are obviously yeah. remakes uh, or remasters. Then you've got... I mean, it, these are all mainline, though. So either way, you, you slice it up, I guess it is. Kind Producer of the Perfection, seventh. Perfection, Neptunia U, Hyper Devotion... I think it does count as the seventh game that they made. But uh, in any case, this is supposed to be a sequel to Neptunia Victory, which came out on the PlayStation 3 years ago. Um, and we actually have a review for that up on RPGsite.net if you are interested in that. But uh, RPG- and Neptunia Rebirth 3 is Victory, basically. So you can check that out as well. But um, let's talk about Mega Dimension. Now, that game came out a couple weeks ago as of this recording. Mm-hmm. I'm still playing it. Um, I actually just recently beat it, uh, the regular version, and then I went through New Game Plus. I wanted to try to get the true ending. <laughs> yeah, um, I just uh, I just did one playthrough, got the good ending, and then I I still need to play New Game Plus for the true ending. Yeah, yeah. I it actually only took me an hour to get to the point that I was just a, a few mi- like a few hours ago. So it doesn't take long at all. Uh, mm-hmm. to get through that. But what I wanted to do is let's talk about this game. Now, it's obviously the latest release. It's out on the PlayStation 4 exclusively. Oh, exclusively, yeah. That's crazy. That's only for the PS4. Yeah, it's it's obviously the last game that we can really compare this to for um, Idea Factory and Kapal Heart is um, Omega Quintet, which came out last year, Game of the Year 2015. I'm sure oh. you guys can go back <laughs> and listen to the recording. Yeah, um, uh, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I'm sure it's using, it's not, uh, it looks like it's using a lot of the same engine, but, um, so let's just kind of go through it. Um, so... I'm, I'm floored that, that the performance is like, great on it. It's a 1080p consistently 60 frames for them. There are some very minor hitches, like in some areas, but I'm, I'm, I'm stunned that, you know, it runs perfectly fine. It runs great. It loads into the battles real quickly. You can save the game and load up the game super, like instantly. So there's no problems with that. Um, they've done a great job in bringing that game up. And it's not like it looks bad. Uh, it actually looks no. really good uh, for uh, a game of that style. I mean, obviously it's not going to fight with Witcher 3 or something like that, but no, I think no, for but what it's worth, it's easily the best look it, in the series it, then. Yeah, it's, it's, it feels a lot cleaner. The UI changes, the, all the new mechanics. There, like, there are so many new things in this game that just make it, in my opinion, like so much better than the previous games. Oh, absolutely. I, there's always uh, been, for me, there's always been qualms with the other games. Um, I mean, obviously, you're talking about the most recent example that we've got is like handheld handheld games and like remakes of PlayStation 3 games. So, and they're all for Vita. So, you know, they're barely like launch PS3 uh, technology uh, when you compare the Vita to what it is. Um, so we've got this PlayStation 4 release, so yeah, it looks great. Um, everything runs, as we said, really smoothly. So let's kind of talk about more about the core mechanics of the game yeah. now. Um, Where do you want to start? There's a lot. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. I mean, we, we'll talk about things like story and music later, but for the gameplay itself, now, there seems to be um, some changes. Of course, they did not carry over the uh, Rebirth systems that were in the other in the rebirth games specifically which was like sort of like a cheat engine where you could uh, adjust the uh, mechanics of the game mm-hmm. so for the most part we're kind of sticking with the more traditional rpg so yeah the, the, there's still the scout system in there but it plays a very very minor role compared to those other games yeah which i'm actually i was kind of a little bummed about um just because it seems so like you barely touch it um it's it's like set it and forget it kind of thing so mm-hmm. with the combat itself now the in the past it was uh, the gameplay the combat itself hasn't changed that much so as far as going from like Mach 2 and victory onward it's using obviously a lot of the victory's combat so you're obviously each character has their own set of moves uh set of like you you create a combo basically using different um uh, different combo that you unlock as you level up. So you've got your basic attack, you've got an attack that can break someone's guard, and then you've got your heavy attack for when, you know, once you lower the guard, you can really lay into the enemy. Um, so it seems like there's less control over that. Uh, well, uh, so, l- like, 
they're the, like they got rid of the guard gauge overall, like you know, breaking that guard. There's like multiple life bars now for like these things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and in the in the, like in the combos, there's the there's the rush, the power, and the standard. There's yeah, no, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and it's it's interesting in the sense that like there, there's only a limited amount of attacks that you can like set, and it depends on like the weapon that you equip. When you equip a weapon, it has its own set of like um, slots available to it. So let's say That's one weapon. weapon Okay, it's for that's weapon. Me. That's, I didn't yeah. <laughs> um, so, like, say what one weapon only has like can only do like one rush attack after doing its like, initial attack, and but has like three power attacks, or and then like two standard attacks. While another one can completely change that, have like say three on all of those, um, and then in each of these um, moves that you have, they all come with a combo trait, and uh, activating that combo trait. Uh, they'll have a uh, prerequisite for it. Some may have none. Some may have all oh, your previous attack was, um, say, standard, and then so you can co- activate this combo trait when you activate this move, and that basically deals uh, bonus damage or critical damage when you use that move because you uh, used a standard attack before it, which was its combo trait and whatnot. And that really adds a, a layer of uh, depth that was uh, really missing you know, in uh, past games in terms of, like, how you uh, set up your uh, standard attacks. Like, uh, in the past games, you usually just, like, you know, equip, like, you know, the most powerful ones, depending on your AP and then whatnot. While this one really has you think, it's like, okay, how do I get make the most out of this character's strengths? I know what their animations look like. I know what this move, how many hits this will do. So uh, how do I really maximize this uh, person's damage based on what weapon... Uh, I give them. Yeah, and, on that. and in the past, like that's what I kind of started off this game doing. See, I, I didn't know that there were slots per weapon. I thought it was just like, am I just not doing this right, or am I stuck with this? And if it's per level, so and that's why I explained it. I thought it was like when you leveled up. I mean, when you level up, you do unlock new moves. Yeah, you so do. just to kind of explain people who do have not played the series before, it's that the combo system acts where you're in battle, you run up to an enemy, enemy. And you hit X to engage with them. And at that point, you can press X or cross um, square or um, triangle. Triangle is your rush attacks. Square is your power attacks. And X and cross, I keep saying, I'll say X just because I can't. Say X. X uh, is for your standard attack. So you can hit X, X, square, square, kind of like that. Like just set up a combo and mm-hmm. you are able to, in, in the menu, um, change up the different uh, attacks that you have for your combo. And some of them have their own elements that they use, like ice attacks, uh, wind attacks, fire attacks, so on, that certain enemies are, of course, weak to that you want to take advantage of. Now, even if there's not a bar on screen, it still seems like there's enemies where you have to break their guard before you can deal some damage. I know there definitely are some bosses that are Yeah, there, there are definitely bosses. Like, they have this new uh, parts break uh, yeah. mechanic. And then, so there will be some uh, enemies and bosses that have, like, you know, a defense mechanic uh that'll uh, that'll only like open up once you like break a certain guard so you have to be like say say like a, a character has like a cape on you know you yeah. have to like uh, <laughs> you, know uh, you, 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 yeah. you have to uh, you know go behind them and uh, keep attacking uh that cape until you know that's off and then now you can do regular damage to them yeah there's like weapons too like some bo- some enemies have like weapons that need mm-hmm. to be broken too right so that's the thing where that it's obviously deviates a little bit from the past games but also um you know, they kept with the coupling system, which you have your front row of characters, and then you have your back row. I'm still trying to remember some of this stuff, because it seems like, I mean, it's it's not even been that long since I was covering those games. I mean, it was just last year that we got Rebirth 2 and Rebirth 3 in the same year uh, uh, in the West. And so, um, obviously, you have different rows, and you can switch out characters when you want to. Um, kind of like Final Fantasy X style, where if an enemy, excuse me, a, a party member is getting low on health, they can switch to the party member behind them and um, instantly have uh, a move that they can use. Um, you can't switch, you know, you can't keep switching back and back. You have to like, d- you have to switch. Yeah, to commit. Step. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's a uh, one one switch per turn. Yeah, you know? and that's and that's yeah. pretty cool. That's always been yeah. like a very cool thing to do, especially when you're really stuck. But what I've noticed from this game is that. It's not hard. <laughs> it's actually kind of easy when you... I mean, in the beginning of the game, this is kind of... It like, is, yeah. You were, yeah, when I was talking to you before, I was complaining that it felt difficult. Uh, but once you got over the hump, and this was maybe about like halfway through the game, it suddenly became extremely easy. Uh, I don't know about you. But... Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah it, it's the, at a certain point in the game, because, because they give you so many options to empower like uh, you know your 
uh, party. Yeah. Like, like, there's so many ways to do a lot of damage. Like, uh, a new system in this game, the formation system. Um, essentially, uh, you have uh, certain uh, char specific characters that can do attacks, like, uh, up uh, to, like, one to three other people who can participate either in a line formation, triangle formation, or square formation. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that does a bunch of damage once you get, like, you know, the prerequisites uh, on it. And yeah, it's I, just... think, I think once you hit like level thirty, you're basically getting yeah. one per battle, and so it, it's it's instantly becoming a thing where it's not even a it's not even a problem anymore. It's like a cakewalk, even up to I mean, I just beat the game, and even the last boss was pretty easy. Uh, yeah, all I did was just hammer on special skills, and that was it, and I got through it pretty simply. But that's not to say like there's not more to it than that. I mean, there's oh, still no, it's no. still pretty there, fun. I mean, there, even there's a whole post game that's difficult. Yeah, there's and, like they're, they're super like. Uh, optional dungeons, of course. Just that the, the main storyline itself isn't difficult, but the, if but for people who seek greater challenges, there are definitely ones that um, unlock uh, in that post game, and um, the rewards are quite substantial. And I don't want to reveal those. But... Oh no, there's there's post game dungeons. There's dungeons you discover through the scouts, um, mm -hmm. which the scout system is basically like you unlock scouts and you can send them to uh, certain dungeons. And they just do their own thing. Like, it takes about five or ten minutes. It's kind of like a mobile game, in a way, which is kind of weird, where you just send an enemy off, and they're gone for ten minutes or so. And then they come back and say, hey, I found an item or some money or a new dungeon or a new scout that you can use. Um, and there's a bunch of different characters from the series. Even Miss Monochrome, I think, shows up. Which was Oh, really yeah, weird. that was awesome. Was like, She's got a new gig, I guess, uh, which is kind of. <laughs> I, I'm not a big fan of like how you have to like kind of babysit scouts. Like once they're done, you have to actually yeah. go back to the scout menu in town, and it's like okay, and then now we can do it again. Instead of just like having just like it build up or queue up like what items they found over time. Yeah. And I liked in, uh, I liked in the other games. So I guess, but at the same time, I think people always had a problem with that system. I mean, I didn't like it in in Victor, and I think that. It wasn't until like Rebirth 3, which I kind of enjoyed the way they did their system, where it's like you're climbing some stairs and you're going through a bunch of dungeons and um, gathering items. But it was like a roguelike, where if you died during your ascension, um, you lost pretty much everything that you had yeah. on your person. So that was kind of if I guess people were bummed out about that. Yeah. They did. It's kind. It's kind of like a. It's kind of half baked uh, in this for yeah, the scouts. Totally. Yeah. It was it was unfortunate, but other than that, I mean, let's let's move on quickly to like. So, why did you feel about the story? Did you think I I, I really liked the way they uh, told the tale this time in um, in this in Victory Two because it's it's set up like uh, like three different games, like right. It's you have this game and it's like it's like told in three different arcs. Yeah. And um, I particularly like you know all the new characters that showed up. Uh, and Uzume uh, was a interesting character. Uh, to focus on in that uh, game, and I really, really like the the new uh, characters, the Shahs. Um, they uh, represent multi, uh, co like prominent companies in the video game industry. One represents Capcom, one represents Bandai Namco, etc. And the way they played it off of that, it's like uh, they're they're heavily re referencing it, but in in a way that's like kind of like tasteful but and down to earth in, in a weird way. Yeah, yeah, like K Shah, C Shah, and S Shah. Uh... Which are K is Konami, C is Capcom, and S is Square Enix, uh, with characters that look similar to like what do you expect, like um, and that and that was that was interesting. I mean, it didn't it didn't seem like they leaned too much into that stuff, like unless you got like some really deeper meaning, as you said. It was as you said, it was more down to earth. I mean, I guess Sisha they did more with that with with like Vong and all that, but that was other than that, it, it seemed like there were just more characters you'd expect in that party it was they didn't yeah. too many references or anything like that i mean um i also really like that like at the second quote-unquote game inside it it's like the, they do a really neat thing where you know it splits out into routes and you, you can uh, focus on a route on like the one of the four god uh, goddesses in the game and i really like that time away from neptune being the main character because cool. it really developed you know each of the other goddesses and like uh see another side of them uh meeting these new characters and their whole dynamic with them um, they're, I'm not saying they're all like super strong and everything, but I like that they started delving into that territory, and I kind of wish there was more of it because at the time that like Neptune stepped back in the spot, like, like oh man, like <laughs> it, I mean, it did. I, I, yeah, yeah, totally. I, I really, I really, really appreciate that they, uh, they they delved into that, even though it's kind of like it was relatively brief. It was nice to see. 
it made you want Vert to have her own game finally. That's just mm, what I came yeah. away with it. I was like, man, it'd be great if she actually got one of her own too. Now that everyone else has got one, because <laughs> like, it's. I mean, she's not my favorite character, of course, but man, um, you know the way that they treat her in that game. It's like, yeah, yeah. How about give her some attention? <laughs> just because yeah. she's been kind of ignored, and uh, I guess that's also having to do with the fan base. I think she's probably the least popular of the goddesses. I mean, that seems pretty easy to say, but. It's kind of funny now that I think about it, how that game treats her. Uh, there, uh, the, I, I will say, though, that there, there are obnoxious things about it, especially some of the dungeon designs. Totally, in it. yeah. They did it again, right? They recycled dungeons. Um, the, 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 well, I mean, in in one of them, you know, you have to, uh, you know, they have the same dungeon designs from the previous games, but also yeah. there are some new dungeons that are just like, it kind of just felt like, not really realized, and some of them were like obnoxious to my eyes. Like you know, some of them are really, really vibrant and bright. It's like, ow. <laughs> yeah, and I think there's well, it's 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 kind of what they did before, where it's like they used the final dungeon is the same as a dungeon that was used earlier, and I hated that. And it's they relied too much on using mazes and platforms and things like that. And I was like, come on, guys, I, I really like this game. I just think the dungeon design they need to find somebody new to do their dungeons or something, just because it, yeah. it's, it's really. And like you said, they're using a lot of the dungeons that were in the previous games. Like, it's the PlayStation 4. You guys have clearly put a lot more money into this one. I wish you would just throw out a lot of that yeah. stuff and start over. And that kind of carries over a little bit to the to the soundtrack, too, where they're using some of the same tracks. But they also have some really great, great yeah. music in oh, that game, too. Oh, my oh God. yeah. The new, the, new, the new tracks are, like, amazing. <laughs> Holy crap. It's like Falcon music. I was like, what is this? It's got guitars and like all these instruments that come in. A lot of obviously like techno and things like that, just like what the series has have kind of had in the past. Yeah. But I think it's probably their best soundtrack they've ever done. I Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. Just like, I, I went back I, and listened to it and it was great. I, I appreciate that they, that that this entry has they've clearly like stepped it up. Like they they they, they actually, you know, put forth like a handful of like a bunch of new assets in it. They've uh, really d- done well with the script uh, on yeah. that, and it's just it, it's a it's a wonderful game. I think it's a, it's actually like very fun to play consistently all the way through. Yes. It's just there there are there are things about it that like still is holding it back, and it's been a problem with the, with the series uh, for quite a while. I agree. I think if they worked on those things in the next game that they make, um, I'm excited to see what they'll do because obviously they're not going to make Victory Three. At least I hope not. Uh, and hopefully start with yeah. something new because I felt like they've kind of found their footing and it's great to see that they're already knowing what to use and th- what the strengths of the new hardware and now they can kind of move forward with that. So it seems like they're kind of riding high from that. So I'm excited to see what they do. Yeah. Uh, ideally, if it was up to me, I'd just say, hey, give the Shahs their own spinoff game and then <laughs> we're good. I mean, I, I, I love those new characters. Yeah, totally. Uh, once again, that's why I loved about Hyper Devotion. They just had a bunch of new characters that they added. Bring more new characters in. Mm-hmm. I think that does the series a lot better. So, right. But yeah, other than that, I mean, we'll have a review up on the site soon. Um, as of this recording, it's not up yet, but we'll have it in the next couple of days. So um, check it out, and I'm sure you'll see some very positive things to be said about that game. So <laughs> thanks a lot, Josh, for talking to me about Mega Dimension, Neptunia V2, and thank you, Adam, for putting up with that in the background. <laughs>